Welcome to On The Couch with NMC. I'm your host, Anthea Neombo. Today, we're going to talk about HIV and AIDS in Namibia. To give us insight on this lovely topic is our guest, Miss Verona Dupree. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Anthea, and it's really nice having me here today. I see that you are already in red, which is the international color for awareness raising in terms of HIV AIDS. Yes, I am there. <laughs> Miss Verona, why is it important to have discussions around HIV and AIDS education? Namibia already started just late 80s, early 90s. We have started with different plans to ensure that everyone who we suspect might be HIV positive, mm -hmm. that they do test, and those who are tested positive, that we try to get them on our antiviral program, the ARV program that we are following, and also to educate people around HIV AIDS, but also to have policies in place um, and Anthea, we are one government in the Republic of Namibia, but remember we're also reporting into Africa, where we have 54 countries, and where we have signed our agreements and our treaties as a government to the African region. We also report to World Health Organization, and it's not only Namibia, the globally we report in terms of what we do in terms of prevention and mm -hmm. treatment, rehabilitation, getting people in treatment, and then we break it down. You will also find that we have UN agencies in our country. Mm -hmm. We have USA um, governmental agencies who are also supporting local NGOs and churches, as well as faith-based organizations, because we want to ensure that everyone is being tested if you are positive, and if then you should be on your ARVs and then we have a holistic program in terms of also rendering counseling services. This is posing a health risk um, on our health sector in our hospitals and it creates a lot of uh, financial burden for the state. Therefore it's inevitable that we get our people educated and on treatment. Are there any effects like mental effects of those that are diagnosed with HIV and AIDS? Definitely. Um, Anthea, if you can just think about such diagnosis, what such person must feel, you feel you, you're going to die. It's like a death sentence. Mm. But um, it's not a death sentence anymore. It's like any other diseases. We have so much worked on the stigma on international level, mm -hmm. on local level. It is. We have normalized it. There is no more isolation rooms. Um, anyone who is being tested positive are treated, treated the same. But mentally, it does take a toll on people. You will find that people sometimes want to cope with it and they don't know how to cope. So what they will do is they might engage in, in sexual behavior which is immoral or behavior that they normally never did or they take more alcohol than they used to be, or they engage with activities that, um, that they normally not used to do. And they can even become very depressed. And remember, they are isolated and they keep the secret and nobody is knowing about the secret. And they are heavy burdened. And the moment they become sick, they realize that they are not productive anymore. So they are anxious. They are fearful, they have to tell their spouses, their partners, their families. It might be that the children are also positive, that they have to inform the school because the child is constantly sick or not healthy. So it is really a struggle for that person to know that it is HIV positive and to, to also cope with the demands mm. of life and actually to live a masking life until it's revealed. And when it's revealed, there are more likely people that understand them, that they have families that are supportive, and that is what we encourage for them to make it part of, of the acceptance. Acceptance will be the most difficult part for them to live actually with it, because it's about their decision. Sometimes it was not intentional, 
um, it just happened to them. It's like any other person that mm. develop a mental illnesses. You never know um, that you are may maybe more genetically prone for mm -hmm. any mental illnesses. So you didn't go intentionally and said, I'm doing this behavior because I wanted to contract the HIV. So many people um, are actually very shocked hearing it mm -hmm. and it's very painful for them to live with it. Speaking about that, it seems like it's also a social aspect. So what is the role of social work in HIV and AIDS sector? And the, the social worker has actually a very important role because um, she is working with a multi or he is working with a multidisciplinary team. And many times we treat the clients who are HIV positive in silos and you will find that people don't know on what medication they are. So they talk about a green tablet, a blue tablet, a tablet that I got from, from the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So um, for us is to explain to them their diagnosis. We want to explain to them what, is, what, what will happen with their body. We want to explain to them what the medication does. Is there any side effects? How they need to eat? When they have to drink it? Because sometimes they skip the tablet. Sometimes the tablet has really nasty side effects. Sometimes they have struggled to eat the right food. Or they don't have appetite. They might have food, but they don't have appetite. So uh, we are playing a, uh, actually a facilitating role mm -hmm. between what the doctor said, the diagnosis, what the psychologist brought to them, the counseling mm -hmm. services, and the social worker is um, playing a role in facilitating that information yes. that it's well understood because many of the times clients are not adhering to the medication, not because they just want to disobey or not <laughs> listening to the yeah. doctor but it just becomes cumbersome to remember everything that you need to do is if the doctor tells you you have to eat and drink this this time is happening this and mm. it's it they are overwhelmed they are feeling overwhelmed and then they still have demands at work they still have demands at, at, at the family family members or they have to drive the kids they're constantly tired so for them to manage it and to juggle it and to mm. keep adhering to the medication and to constantly use condoms even if you have a faithful partner and to explain it to them and to bring it home to them so that it become a lifestyle, it's not easy. How can we as a community, as a family, support those that have been diagnosed with HIV and AIDS? I think, Anthea, there is no greater team and support that people can have as family. Family does not have an idea how a beautiful part they can play in their person's or loved one's life. You know, the last thing that you want is a person that is diagnosed today and in two years time he's so debilitating, he's so sick, he's not mentally well everyone has to look after him it's a burden for that family while he's young he's energetic he can still work mm -hmm. we have to keep them productive in their lifestyle and we have to destigmatize it like any other illness and checking in on them what's up in them sms on them are you taking your medication can i take you to the doctor can i take you to the clinic sometimes they just tired to tell the nurse all oh, the side effects that they have and somebody just to translate that information what he is really going through or what he is she, is she or she is going through but the matter of the fact and there is there's also other illnesses so sometimes that person can develop diabetes mm -hmm. cholesterol or uh, high blood pressure and that person has to now manage that med medication and that disease to on top of all the HIV and AIDS and if they go into the AIDS where it's a full spectrum of diseases then it's difficult for them and it's challenging for them and with us in Namibia now you can live for many years healthy mm -hmm. there are services there are medication it's free of charge people can make use of counseling services at state hospital at uh, state facilities or, or on the medical AIDS so, uh, HIV AIDS is no longer a death sentence. 
Thank you very much for bringing a different perspective to the topic of HIV and AIDS. Thank you very much. It has been a riveting discussion, I must say. If I could uh, tell the listeners today, if they have to do something beautiful, is to take more care of their loved ones around them. Because you don't know how long you still will have them. And you don't want to stand at somebody's sickbed and literally and physically take care of that person. So if you can keep them as long as possible, healthy, active, independent, then they can do it. Thank you once again, Ms. Verona. My pleasure, Anthea. It was nice meeting you again. As it's HIV and AIDS Global Awareness Month, take care of yourself and your loved ones. Follow us on all our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our episodes. Until next time, it's bye for now. Ciao. Bye.